Hey guys! Today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Palestine. Freedom is Hey guys! Thank you for joining me once again for another look at Afro-descending communities around the world. This time we're talking about the African diaspora in Palestine. Given recent events in Palestine, it seems like a timely moment to shine a light on the Afro-Palestinian community, their remarkable history and the ways in which they have been affected by Israeli occupation in Palestine. Although the Afro-Palestinian community is largely concentrated in Jerusalem, there are also Afro-descendant communities in Gaza and the West Bank town of Jericho. The biggest Afro-Palestinian population can be found in an enclave in Old Jerusalem, often referred to as the African Quarter or Little Harlem. Estimates put the current Afro-Palestinian community at between 350 and 450 people, distributed across roughly 50 different families. They mainly reside in two neighbourhoods, Ribat al-Mansuri and Ribat al-Busari. One of these compounds leads on to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, considered the third holiest site in Islam. This mosque was recently the focal point of clashes between local Palestinian residents and Israeli forces. Tensions flared up again in early May 2021, when Israeli security forces besieged the Al-Aqsa Mosque during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. When it comes to the origins of the Afro-Palestinian community, there have been several distinct influxes of African migration to Palestine over the years. From at least the 12th century onwards, if not earlier, African Muslims made regular pilgrimages to the Middle East. Many African Muslims who participated in the Hajj, the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, would visit the Al-Aqsa Mosque on their return journey. Over the years, some African pilgrims settled permanently in Palestine, marrying local Palestinian women and having interracial Afro-Arab families. A number of Africans came to Palestine during the time of the Ottoman Empire when they were assigned to guard the Haram es Sharif, or Temple Mount as it is also known. As previously mentioned, the two modern-day enclaves that are home to the Afro-Palestinian community in Jerusalem are called Ribat al-Mansuri and Ribat al-Busari. Although they used to serve as hostels for Muslim pilgrims, from 1916 to 1918, during the Arab Revolt of World War I, Ottoman forces converted these compounds into two prisons. These prisons were known as the Blood Prison and the Hanging Prison, where they detained and executed perceived dissidents. Towards the end of World War I, the British general Edmund Allenby led a military campaign against Ottoman forces. As such, the British hired conscripted labourers from Nigeria, Sudan, Senegal and Chad to build railroads and lay pipes in Jerusalem as part of the British Engineering Corps. During the British Mandate in Palestine, particularly in the 1930s, the number of Africans migrating to Jerusalem grew steadily. The most recent major influx of African migrants to Palestine occurred following World War II. The State of Israel was established in 1948. Many African Muslims who made their pilgrimage to Palestine around that time were forced to settle permanently as borders were closed. Some Africans even joined the Arab Liberation Army and fought on the side of the Palestinians. One of the best-known Afro-Palestinians in history is Ali Jiddah, a former Palestinian resistance fighter of Chadian descent. Ali Jiddah is best known for his involvement with the organisation The Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. In response to the Israeli occupation of Jerusalem, in 1968 he planted four hand grenades on Strauss Street in Jerusalem, which injured nine Israelis. Ali Jidda was sentenced to 25 years in prison, but was released in 1985 after serving 17 years. Following his release, Jidda worked as a journalist before offering tours of the old city in Jerusalem, teaching people about life in the area under Israeli occupation. Today, he lives in Beit Hanina in East Jerusalem and has two sons. Another well-known Afro-Palestinian resistance fighter is Fatima Benawi. Born to a Nigerian father and a Palestinian mother, Fatima became the first female Palestinian to be arrested on terrorism charges. In 1967, she made a failed attempt to bomb an Israeli cinema in Jerusalem and was sentenced to 30 years in prison, of which she served 10. Upon her release, she was sent into exile. Fatima Benawi returned in 1993 to serve as chief of the Palestinian Female Police Corps in Gaza. 
Fatima now lives in Jordan. The Afro-Palestinian community today are considered to be relatively well integrated and accepted in wider Palestinian society and over the years they have actively engaged in the Palestinian resistance movement. For the community in East Jerusalem, sandwiched between two Israeli checkpoints, heightened security and restricted movement has meant that their local businesses have suffered. This puts an already marginalised community in an even more precarious position. Most Afro-Palestinians remain proud of their African heritage. There is a grassroots welfare organisation in Jerusalem called the African Community Society. Established in 1983, it is run by Musa Kous, a Palestinian of Chadian descent. The society works to provide mentoring and support for vulnerable Afro-Palestinian youths. During the global pandemic, the African Community Society participated in distributing free masks and hand sanitizer in the local area. In spite of the struggles the community faces, there is hope amongst Afro-Palestinians that future generations will one day be able to live peacefully and secure their freedom. That brings us to the end of our video on the African diaspora in Palestine. Thank you for watching and please do check out my videos on the African diaspora in tons of other destinations. And don't forget I am serving you daily Black History content on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official. I'll see you in the next video. Freedom is